Hey, this is uh, Christian. Welcome to my site. Um, thanks for watching. This is a review of uh, some Claymore castings, metal uh, miniatures for the uh, early Hundred Years War. Um, this came out of Scotland. Uh, I'm here in the States. Uh, order was received on the 1st, and I got it um, on the 13th, so I'm pretty damn happy. Um, with the shipping, uh, this is what came, and we'll unbox it. This is typically, I've ordered from Claymore before and had a great experience. Um, uh, David and his, his wife, Arlene, uh, they run a small, um, relatively young in the casting business. Uh, and this is how your miniatures will come packed if you order from them. So let's get these out on the table and we'll take a look at some of these uh, individually. So the reason why I wanted to review some of these units is because I figured that everybody wanted to, to go for the mounted knights and go for the, the 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 dismounted knights, the foot knights. I wanted a lot of the billmen and the, the paviciers and the, uh, the infantry with two-handed weapons because I think that they are very versatile throughout the uh, entire Hundred Year uh, War conflict. Um, so a lot of the armor can be uh, used for early, mid, and some some of the, even the late battles. So uh, the first one here is the um, the Billman here, the OT19, and it came with um, um, some bill hooks, Vluges. Very well detailed, of course. I love Claim Warther, one of my favorites. Uh, I've ordered from them once before and I had uh, conversations uh, with David. Just an extremely nice, generous man. Look forward to uh, supporting him in the future, honestly. Here you can see these guys, they, uh, you know, they're in their tunics, kettle helms. All right, now we're going to go on to the, um, the OT-48. These are the men in arms. I really like this guy. What's really great about Claymore is that uh, their poses seem like they're right in the thick of action. You know, they're not just like walking or chilling out. They're really in the action. You can tell that this guy is rallying his troops or he's calling desperately for reinforcements. Um, I think that's really cool. And this guy's about ready to take somebody's legs off. And I don't know, man, no matter what you're wearing, that... Uh, that battle axe going for your Achilles or your foot or, you know, that's really going to hurt. And a lot of these guys have those, uh, those great, great helms. But you see on his foot, his entire foot's got chain. You know, he doesn't have the sabatons. Um, they're working with what they got in the hundred, uh, early Hundred Years War period. And here in this guy, um, if you look closely, if I can get it to focus, his hand has got scale mail, which I think is awesome. So, I mean, the options to paint that, you can geld it, gild it, you can color just the armor. Of course, they're tying on a lot of their armor to their gambesons, to their under protection. And then, I hope you can see it, you see the dags. Excellent kit. And then here's another guy that's, uh, I think he's taking your legs out too. 
which these appealed to me because you could put these guys in front of the pikemen. Um, so I'll have to pin that, and that's okay. And Claymore has always been generous about the shields. Um, if you zoom out, it seems like just about everybody has got shields. And I think that's great because for for me, I um I want to paint uh, my friend's heraldry on these. Uh, not necessarily historical, uh, but their their personal coat of arms, their family crests and such. So I think that's really cool that they give us an option for that. Um, early medieval period, I mean, you see the variations in the heater shields. You know, this is more of a teardrop, and then you've got, this is, uh, you know, more in style for just just before they started to go away. So I think that's really cool that there's variations here. And then we get into the OT-55 here. So this guy's got a skull cap, but he doesn't have that chainmail koi for that aventail. Looks like a piece of leather just chilling out, or, or his actual cloth uh, koi, his head covering just chilling out under, uh, under the, um, the mail. Which I think is great. It's padded gambeson. A lot of these guys have sidearms too, so he's got this like falchion. Um, but it looks like it's a shorter, you know, one-handed falchion, which is cool. And then he's got that dirk, uh, that um, that sort of dagger, bollock dagger. I really like this was the reason why I bought this particular pack was this guy with his um, with his hood see the livery pipe there hanging down and the dags I like the really thin um, dags that will make for a really interesting model to paint um, another thing he's not wearing he's he's wearing gloves man he's not wearing um you know full plate he's not wearing those composite gauntlets um, Seems like he's wearing. Um, seems like he's wearing his uh, just regular hose uh, and shoes. So that this guy could be some city guard somewhere, you know. And that's how a lot of these uh, feudal armies were pulled out. They're pulled out city guards. They all just kind of like gaggled together into combat. So I mean, that's just that's just what happened. Didn't have a lot of upstanding professional armies back then. So I really like these because of the, of course, the gambesons, the cloth, that, you know, you can, this guy looks like he's getting charged down and he's chilling out with his uh, pole arm or whatever and he's about ready to draw that side arm, go to work. Pretty cool. Here's the OT-54, two-handed weapons. Again, that same motif, you've got uh, lots of cloth. You've got the, um, Look at the dags on the bottom, this this castle kind of look. Not too much flash. There's really not not a lot of uh not a lot of mold lines from what I can see. I mean I haven't really gotten under the microscope with a lot of these guys, but I think it's really cool. You could paint this guy with mittens. Just excellent. You could put some pikes or spears in these guys' hands, too, and they'd be totally fine. I like these guys because you can put them in the back rank and they look like they're about to smash somebody over the head with a bill hook or maul or mace or something. Really digging the leery pipes. That's that, that's that long piece of cloth on the edge of the hood. If you can see, it's tucked into his belt. And this second part here is the um, the piece that's just chilling and hanging outside of the belt. That's really cool. Good job, Dave. And sculptors. See, there's that falchion again. Dags flowing out over over top of the arbor. It's just great detail. Spearman, OT-45. I 
I like this guy because he, he's obviously going to be a standard bearer of some sort. <laughs> Lots of chain. OT43. So a lot of these guys, I mean, they don't have a lot of bassinets, right? Not a lot of, not a lot of, they got um, their kettle helms, skull caps and such. Dave and company are fashion freaks, apparently. Pretty cool. So this is a pair. Um, this is a, the uh, Pavise shields, and this is alongside of some of the Perry Mercenary Pavise shields. So there's a lot uh, more greater variations than the ones I've seen so far from the Perrys, um, which is okay. I mean, it's totally fine. But um, I really like how huge this, these are. I'm really a fan of the big, big shields. So I can paint the big crests on them and such. That's gonna be awesome. And finally, um, let's go down to the uh, command pack. This is the reason why I bought um, this round of figures because um, I'm not into plumes all that much, but I think that this is a really awesome sculpt and I'm really into two-handed uh, long swords, great swords, swihanders, and even though they weren't used extensively in the early part of the period or just in, you know, in general in the Hundred Years' War, I just think it's really cool to see this guy wielding this big-ass sword with this huge cross guard in combat. Um, little square parts are called Adelaide's. And uh, they're not really, they're, they weren't necessarily armor, but they were more of, hey, this is my coat of arms. Please don't beat me over the head. <laughs> I, I have money. This is my coat of arms. And see the, uh, the surcoat, the tunic, just flowing. This is really awesome action shots, which I think is really cool. And this man's the reason why I bought it, uh, the, the set. Um, the helmet um, is, um, I can't remember what the name is. Uh, it's a Earl of Sandwich or the Sandwich Knight and it's, it's effigy. Um, oh crap, I'm going to have to consult the book. Creating Miniatures Knights is an excellent... Um, source material. And look, I opened right up to it. Sir Thomas Daniel. And I think that his, his armor is just exceptional. I just absolutely love it. Um, simple, no frills. But I really like the, the sort of skull cap. You know, I don't know if he'd be wearing a great helm or something over top of that initially. But the the red parts are those uh, sort of dags and they're, um, they're just pieces of, you know, I don't know if you'd want to say lamellar, but they're attached to the helmet somehow. I think that's really cool. I'll never do that again. And he's just chilling. He's got his long sword and he's holding his banner. I'll probably put a two-hander uh, two in his hands. Because that's the type of armor that I really like is from his time period. Excellent. I'm blown away. And you got old boy here chilling with his gray helm. Watching. See, everybody's pointing in mini miniature medieval land. So what's what's crazy about these raised visors is um, when you're trying to give orders on the battlefield and you're trying to scream inside of that visor, it's really, really difficult. And uh, so I would imagine that a lot of these guys who are in key positions, who are 
not necessarily pages, but you know, subordinate battlefield commanders and such. Um, they had to raise those visors a lot to bark orders at their bodies. I mean, I'm sure there's just, I mean, but it's not explosions and such like modern battlefields, but there was definitely clanking and gnashing of teeth and men dying on the field. So people screaming to get their get their heart rates up. So I think raised visors are a thing. All right, and finally the uh, OT23. These are, this is the new uh, mounted knights that just came out from from um, Claymore Castings. And I really, really like this horse. This might be my favorite uh, my favorite horse I've picked up. Yeah, it's nice and heavy, and this this horse looks like it's been beaten half to death, and it's running to save its life <laughs> to, into combat. And I just think it's just the coolest horse. Um, comparison, you know, so you can paint that um, coat of arms on there. You can paint that device. I cannot wait to paint this horse. Um, this is what really spoke to me and got my wallet out was this horse. Was this knight and that horse. Here's the mounted rider. Yawning. Adelaide's again. And this is how his other arm came. It was kind of attached to the uh, to the sprue on the first guy. Oh, just excellent. All right, so this is a 15-minute video. Sorry, we're uh, going to wrap it up here in a second. Let's uh, put a, a Perry horse next to a Claymore Castings horse. And you'll notice that this is from the, uh, the Perry's, uh, um, not necessarily the Hundred Years War range, but the War of the Roses range. And the War, the War of the Roses range is just a little bit taller. It just it's very uh, not very noticeable. Um, but if you were to get a Perry Knight next to a Claymore Castings Knight, you'd see that the rider, the rider looks the same, but the horse is just. All to all, all just very slightly smaller. They can still work side by side, though. I mean, it just it, I think it's just fine. Very excited. Okay, so let's put um, some miniatures next to each other here. All right, so from left to right, we've got um, a Perry, a Claymore Castings, and an Antediluvian miniature. Let's stand them up side by each. So just absolutely no, just not a lot of difference at all in height. And yeah, they could absolutely work on the field next to each other. I'm so excited that these companies exist so that I can sort of put these dioramas together. And really, you can't tell a huge amount of difference unless you really go to the legs. Um, the Perry legs are, are a bit big in comparison to the other two, just, I mean, just fractional. And the, um, the antediluvians are just a tiny bit smaller, but really, I mean, they are going to pack up on the field so well together. I'm very excited, especially for my dismounted infantry. So, um, this is Christian, and thanks for sitting through my video of the uh, new Claymore castings that I just got. Uh, the ones that we've... Uh, that we've... Uh, reviewed are the OT23 mounted knights 
OT43, OT45, OT54, OT55, OT48, OT19, and finally OT50. And how in the world am I going to paint all these guys? <laughs> be well. Be good to each other. Thanks.